Hello friends, welcome to this lecture. Today we come to know about some useful definition from the graph theory. So first definition is order of a graph. If G be a finite graph, then the number of vertices denoted by mod V is called the order of a graph. This mod V is the cardinality of V. That means how many vertices are there in the vertex set. For example, if this is our graph, then here we have V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. Total 6 vertices. So, the cardinality of V is 6. So, the order of the graph G is 6. Next is size of a graph. Size of a graph means if G be a finite graph, then the number of edges in G is called the size of the graph G and is denoted by the cardinality of E. If we consider the same example, here total 10 number of edges are there. Look, E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6, E7, E8, E9 and E10. So, total 10 number of edges are there. So, the size of the graph is 10. Next is the isolated vertex or isolated node. A vertex of degree 0 in a graph is called the isolated vertex. That means if any graph in any vertex have degree 0, it is possible for the null graph. Suppose this one is a null graph. Here three vertices are there V1, V2, V3 and no edges. So each vertex having degree count 0. This is called, are called the isolated vertices. Next is the pendant vertex. So pendant vertex is what? A vertex of a graph G with degree 1 is called the pendant vertex. If this one is the graph, then here the degree of V1 is 1. Degree of V2 is 2, degree of V3 is 2 and degree of V4 is again 1. So, degree of V1 is 1 and degree of V4 is 1. That's why these two vertices are called the pendant vertex. Now, it is the regular graph which is a very important graph. A graph in which all vertices are of equal degree is called a regular graph. If every vertex of G has degree K, then G is said to be K regular graph. For example, let two vertices are there V1 and V2 and these two are connected by an edge. As all these graphs are the simple graph, so more than one edge not possible for this graph. Now the degree of V1 is 1 and degree of V2 is 1. So both the vertices have same degree. That's why this is called the one regular graph. Now if we have the three vertices, then three vertices can connect accordingly. Here V1 having degree 2, V2 having degree 2, V3 also have the degree 2. And this one is a simple graph. So this one is said to be a two regular graph. Now if we consider four vertices and if we uh, join accordingly then here again we will find out v1 having degree 2 v2 degree 2 v3 have degree 2 and v4 have degree 2 so this one is also a two regular graph now if we consider this one here the same previous graph but with this extra two edges two diagonals we have added so now for that v1 having degree 3 v2 having degree 3 V3 also having degree 3 and V4 is also degree 3. So all the vertices have the same degree. That's why this is called the 3 regular graph. So this is our regular graph. Now it is the complete graph. A simple graph G is said to be complete. If every vertex in G is connected with every other vertex. That is there exists exactly one edge between each pair of distinct vertices. The complete graph of n vertices is denoted by Kn. So if we have only one vertex, then there is no edge connectivity. So this one we say it is a complete graph where 
the degree of this vertex is 0 and this is denoted by k1. Now if we have two vertices then in between two vertices we can draw only one edge. So this is a complete graph. So this is called the k2. If we have three vertices then with three vertices from this first vertex we can add both of these two vertices. So we can draw two edges from this vertex. Now from this vertex also we can join these two. From this vertex also we can join these two. So now this is a complete graph because no more edges we can insert here. If we add any one more edge then it is no longer a simple graph. Because if any one more edge you want to connect then either you have to join these two or these two or these two. Then it forms a self, uh, it forms a parallel edge. So it will no more a simple graph. Hence, this one is a complete graph and this is denoted by K3. If we have four vertices, then we will draw the vertex in this way. From one vertex, all the three vertices should be joined. From this uh, vertex, again all the three vertices should be joined by an edge and similarly for the other. So this is a complete graph and it is denoted by K4. Now if we have five vertices, then any one vertex if we choose, then the remaining four vertex should be added by the four edges. Now again this one we should add again accordingly with all remaining four. So in this way this vertex is completed and this is called the complete graph and denoted by K5. One magical thing is that if we choose this one, so this one have two vertices and both the vertex have the same degree and two vertex the degree is one less that is one. So that it is called the one regular. Here three vertex and all the vertex having degree two. So it is we can say two regular. Again three four vertex and all the vertex having degree three. So it is the three regular graph. And here five vertices and each vertex having degree four. So it is the four regular graph. So from here we can conclude that any complete graph is a regular graph also. So we can say every complete graph is a regular graph but every regular graph not necessarily a complete graph. Just look this one is a regular graph but it is not a complete graph but this one is a complete as well as the regular too. The second conclusion we can draw from here that Kn that is a complete graph with n vertices has exactly n into n minus 1 by 2 edges. Just look here from if 3 vertices are there then from 1 vertex we have to draw 2 edges to join the maximum edges. Now the second vertex if we consider then with that vertex this is already this connectivity already is there so only one more edge we are supposed to draw and from the last one we need not join any edges. That's why from the first vertex we require two edges, from the second we require one and the, from the third we require zero. So accordingly if we go for the n number of vertices, so from the n first vertex we have to draw n minus one number of edges. From the second one we have to draw n minus two number of edges. From third one we should draw n minus three number of edges and from the last one the zero number of edges. And if we add all those then we will find out like this n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus in this way it is up to 1. So if we add this one then the formula for this one is n into n minus 1 by 2. So the complete graph have exactly n into n minus 1 by 2 number of edges. And Every complete graph has n minus 1 regular and that is very obvious which we already have done. According to this all we have one theorem. The statement of this theorem is the maximum degree of any vertex in a simple graph with n vertices is n minus 1. It is very obvious if a complete graph is there then a complete graph with n number of vertices have exactly n minus 1 degree. So if it is a simple graph not a complete graph then we can have at most n minus 1 number of degree for 
one vertex or for each vertex if it have n number of vertices. Now the second theorem from here is the maximum number of edges in a simple graph with n number of vertices is n into n minus 1 by 2. Again as it is the simple graph that's why we can't say that exact number of edges are this one but the maximum number of edges are n into n minus 1 by 2. For the proof we can take the hand shaking theorem hand shaking theorem which we discuss in our lecture number 2. So according to the hand shaking theorem the total degree count for a graph is 2e that is the double the number of edges. Now d that is the degree of vi for 1 to n number of vertices means it is dv1 plus dv2 up to dvn that one is equals to te. If it is a complete graph then with the n number of vertices then the degree for v1 is n minus 1, degree for v2 is also n minus 1, degree for v3 n minus 1, degree for vn is also n minus 1. So this one. If we add all these n minus 1 this is total n number of times. So if we add this n number of times then it will becomes n into n minus 1 is equals to 2e. Now this 2 if we take in this side then we will find out it is n into n minus 1 by 2 is equals to e which proves our theorem. Thanks for watching. Next lecture on bipartite graph. Have a nice time.